Hi, my name is Frans van Odea and I am a super teacher. It is 2017 and every teacher will be expected to work with technology of one sort or the other in their classroom. In actual fact, including technology in your teaching is no longer seen as being innovative. Basically, people are expecting that we use technology when we teach. So in this episode, I am going to share five tips on how you can approach this idea of including technology in your lessons. But before we jump into this episode, I'd like to share some exciting news with you. We have recently partnered with School Advisor and they've decided to sponsor a few episodes on this channel. School Advisor is a platform that brings schools and then school suppliers together. So if at your school you need something done, you can just go to School Advisor and look for quality service providers to assist you with the tasks at school. Please be sure to go check out their platform at schooladvisor.co.za forward slash super teacher. I'll of course include all the links to our service providers and our sponsors in the description of the video. So in these sponsored episodes, we are going to feature some of the service providers that are listed on the School Advisors platform. And for this episode, we are going to feature Parrot. Now you'll be hard pressed to find a teacher that does not know this brand. We probably know them for their whiteboards and then the whiteboard markers that they sell. But this isn't the only service that they provide. They are a national supplier of office stationery and solutions, interactive solutions, and signage products. And they do all of this while offering expert service. If you'd like to find out more about Parrot and their other offerings, make sure to go check out their website at www.parrot.co.za. But what I'm most excited about is Parrot's current competition. They are giving away one entry level interactive classroom solution to a lucky teacher. It's to the value of 25,000 Rand. If you'd like to find out how you can enter, please be sure to check out the description of this video and we'll also be posting it on all the other social media platforms. Be sure to enter and check that out. And this brings us to the question of the week. What types of technology are you including in your classroom? It's going to be great to hear what all the other super teachers do in their classrooms. So please answer the question of the week in the comment section down below. So are you ready to hear my advice for when you want to include technology in the classroom? Let's educate. One of the biggest buzzwords in education at the moment is 21st century skills and 21st century learning. And one component of that is ICT literacy. We want to equip learners with skills in working with internet and communication technology. Because when they start their own job or maybe their own company, they will definitely need to have the skills to work with ICTs. Now, if our teachers do not model this behavior and model these skills, how will the kids learn? So it's becoming more and more important that teachers equip themselves and empower themselves with the skills of using technology to teach. One of the great benefits of being one of those keystone species that really know how to work with technology in the classroom is that you become competitive in the employment market. There are so many teachers that just decided that they will not and they will never use technology in the classroom. They'll just teach the same way that they always did. And this is going to become a problem for them. If you do not know how to use technology, you will become obsolete. The education system is changing, maybe gradually and slowly for now, but there will be a time that all teachers will need to incorporate technology in their classrooms. So you better start learning now. But that doesn't take away from the fact that many of our colleagues are fearful of including technology. Many times they just blatantly don't want to work with it because they're afraid to admit that they do not know these skills. Now, one thing that I've found in my journey with technology in the classroom is that you need to take it slow. Not everybody in the entire school or in all schools are going to adapt technology in the classroom immediately. It's a gradual process. Unfortunately, there are many of our colleagues that also think that they are including technology in the classroom, but that it doesn't really become interactive. 
So many teachers say that they are using technology, but basically what they're doing is they're just transferring their notes onto PowerPoint. I've seen this happen many times. When I walk into a classroom, the teacher is using PowerPoint, but it's basically just so that the learners can write down the notes. Basically what they've done is they've substituted the overhead projector and the transparencies for PowerPoint. Now, this is a good start, but we shouldn't be including PowerPoint in every single lesson and thinking that we're now these amazing technology gurus. This should just be the first port of call. There are so many other strategies and tools to use to make your lesson more interactive and more exciting. So what I thought of doing is just share five tips on how every teacher can approach the inclusion of technology in their classroom that will just maybe set them at ease and give you the motivation to start implementing it in your classroom. And the first piece of advice that I'd like to share has to do with time. Do not underestimate the time it takes to learn how to use technology. What happens is that you will spend more time in planning your lesson because you yourself have to get to grips with the nuances of the technology and how you'd like to use that to teach. Ensure that you have enough time at your disposal so that you can learn these new skills and find out interesting ways of introducing it into your class. Along with this, also allow enough time during your classes for little glitches that can occur with technology. I found that Wi-Fi can be extremely frustrating and that we'd need to wait for everybody to maybe, if you use devices for individual learners, that everybody has to get onto the same website or the same app. And this could take some time. So if your lesson is 50 minutes, do not plan a lesson that's 50 minutes. Make sure your content is, for instance, 30 minutes to allow for those little gremlins to slip in and eat up some of your time. The second piece of advice is do not try and do this on your own. You need to get into the habit of building networks with other colleagues who are using technology in their classroom. Now, it does not need to be colleagues in your actual school, but it could be colleagues that you find over the internet. There are so many communities of teachers that are willing to assist and willing to showcase the things that they do in their classroom. You now need to get into the habit of looking for this content or for these tools on a daily basis. Maybe set aside half an hour each day just to scour the internet for cool new ideas or to find colleagues that typically use technology in their classroom and see which techniques work for them because you can now go and implement those in your classroom. No need to reinvent the wheel. The third tip is that you should expect resistance from the learners. If you taught in a specific way for years and years and years, learners get accustomed to the way in which you teach. So when you suddenly start changing the way in which you teach and you start including technology, learners can become resistant to it. Once the learners see the benefits of the technique of using technology in the classroom, they'll quickly catch on and in actual fact start enjoying your lessons more. So just push through that initial resistance and you are going to win them over. The fourth piece of advice is do not try to do too much too quickly. You don't need to transform all of your lessons for the entire year into a technological mode. Maybe start off with one lesson and then gradually you start increasing your repertoire of lessons where you use technology. Slow and steady wins the race. Do what you feel comfortable with, but strive to always do a little bit better. And then my last piece of advice, do not be afraid to fail. It's definitely going to happen. There will be some glitch or some error on the day that you want to implement this new piece of technology in your classroom. And that's okay. Learners have grown accustomed to the issues that happen with technology. So they'll excuse it when it happens in the class. You just have to remain in control. Not control of the technology, just in control of the classroom. What I found happen many times is when I get stuck with technology, that there often are many learners in the class that would want to come and assist. So use these learners 
in many cases, they know more about technology than we do. So start incorporating them in your lessons. If something fails, then you just stop, go back to the normal way in which you would have taught it, and then next time try it again. The important thing here is to reflect and look at why certain things went wrong, how can you change it, and how can you improve for the following lesson. And there you have it, five quick tips, maybe just to set yourself at ease and try and get to include technology in your classroom. That's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. So if you like what we do here, be sure to give this episode a thumbs up. And then also subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more Super Teachers Unite under one banner so that we can make a positive difference in each and every classroom. If you'd like to see more episodes on the Super Teachers Unite channel, be sure to check out the link that's popping up right there and the one right below it. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, there's a button right here that you can press or click on and you will be subscribed to this channel. Until next time, my name is Francois Nodier and I am a super teacher.